stop and ask ourselves, and I think that I do all the time, as not only an educator, but also as a producer, I need to figure out like what is my purpose and what is my function. Do I really want them to know something? Do I want them to learn something? Do I want them to do something about something based on something I said to them? Uh, that needs to be very clear. That intention needs to be very clear uh, to me. Uh, I can also provide them those options. I mean, do I want them just to know it for the sake of knowing it, for the sake of a test? Uh, do I really want them to uh, learn it, involve them in that process, engage them? Um, or do I want to empower them so that they can do something with this information? I think that's an important question that I need to ask. And it's a question that I want to talk with the students about. And I think that that's a really good filter for us as educators to, to realize what is the purpose of, of what we're trying to do to provide kids um, a voice. Because a lot of times, if just means that kids are doing well in school, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're giving them a voice. Sometimes we're taking their voice away because what we want them to do is just basically regurgitate what we want them to say. And we reward those kids. In fact, we give those kids straight, great, school, great grades, right? Thank you for telling me what I needed you to tell me, not what you think. You know, um, we reward kids that 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 um, that don't pick up that guitar and, uh, and, and that don't doodle in class. Uh, we reward kids who would rather do extra credit on something in a class rather than explore some association of what this means in their life, a bigger picture, because there's no way to grade that. There's no way to integrate that into the actual classroom education lesson. So. Um, for me, fundamentally, I mean, when I became a teacher, I wanted to make sure that I can give kids the tool sets that they needed, the devices that they needed to defend themselves. I was tired of providing a third world, third rate education for kids, and I made a promise to provide a first world, first rate education. And the other thing, they've, Kim, you've heard me say this over and over again, I wanted to make sure that my filters were always, um, I want to make sure whatever it is that I'm teaching, learning, sharing with them was relevant, meaningful, and applicable. As a producer, guess what? I make sure that everything I produce is, is relevant, meaningful, and applicable. And, and it's very important to understand the difference between the three. One, relevant. How can I connect it to the kid's life, to what's around them? So it requires... A, a, a good understanding of who it is that I'm communicating with. Then meaningful. It's not, not only because relevance is about connecting to their world. Meaningful is something that I want them to connect to. Like that's what meaning, meaningfulness is, is that, well, I want to know about that because dot, dot, dot. Uh, and then the applicability. Like I'm actually going to use this information to um, hopefully make the world a better place. That's my goal. So I think that when we talk about giving students a student voice, I actually do stop, reflect, and pause even before that to ask myself, um, what really do I want students to do with this information? I mean, the context where I'm working at and in my circumstance, I really want to make sure the kids have options. I think that looking at politics here in Australia as well as politics in the United States, we definitely recognize the fact that we're not teaching kids how to be problem finders and problem solvers. Um, uh, I think that's something that I think that we can fix a lot of these problems if we um, really get kids to learn how to really question, be, really be curious, really challenge, and feel that they can ask questions as opposed to being the one that having to know the right answers.